This morning activity is for the preps ones and twos. We're going to start off by looking at Monet's artwork, the same one we did before, but we're going to look at it in a different way and we're going to talk to the students about what they see or what they think's in the pond. So where we were focusing on the water lily and the lily pad, now we want to look a little bit deeper into the picture. And if you come to the front of the picture here, you can see some golden shapes playing in the front of the water. And you can see these little swirls here, which could be uh, water ripples, not necessarily water lilies. And I want you to have a discussion with your younger students about what they see or what they think is in the water. Um, do they have a pond at home? And we're going to use those answers, which you're going to find out are going to be goldfish or maybe frogs or turtles. And we're going to put some of those creatures in the water. This lesson is designed for the younger students because it's very sensory and it's very play-based and there's a lot of tearing, no scissors, there's a lot of accidental art. And we do still have quite a lot of equipment so I'm going to quickly walk you through the equipment. So we're going to start off with food dye. So I've got some liquid food dye here. I've just got two colours yellow or gold and blue. And I'll talk about that in a second. I've got some paints. I've got this um, special paper, which for years and years and years, I didn't know what to do with it. It's called honeycomb. It doesn't stick to anything. I, I struggled and struggled with it, but I know what to do with it now. Water, masking tape, a brush, some color apps, and you can also bring stencils into this and we've got a special paper called dispersing paper so we're going to start off with the dispersing paper and we're starting off with the food dye so I've got two sheets of dispersing paper now dispersing paper is special because it absorbs the the liquid and it won't run everywhere the paper won't tear it holds more it's really strong it's like a material it's really well knit which means your students can, can go to town on the paper and really, really play with it and it's not going to break. So this lesson, because they're prep one or two, is also going to be a colour lesson. So I always like to break my colours up, obviously, into primary and secondary, but more than that, I, I often work in cool palettes or warm palettes. So I discuss what a cool palette is and what a warm palette is. And a cool and warm palette is all about feelings. So a warm palette makes you feel warm. When you're under the warm sun or you're by a warm fire, what colours would that evoke? So if the sun is yellow and orange or gold, fires are red and orange and they're warm colours, they make you feel warm. So it's all about that feeling. When we look at cool colours, we're feeling cool. So if you go for a swim in the ocean, is it hot or cool? So it's cool, so what colour is the ocean? It's blue or it's green. The shadows are purple. Grass, I often say to the students, if, has anyone ever walked on hot concrete? And they go, yes, and I said, and then you go on the grass to get off the hot concrete with your bare feet and the grass is always cool, it doesn't burn. So it's a cool colour, which is green. So our green, purple and blue versus our orange, red and yellow. So the first step is to have a discussion about what you see in the pond or what's in the pond and then maybe introduce some colour theory. So for the first sheet of dispersing paper we're doing a bit of um, play base work so we're just playing with the paper and colours. It doesn't matter what they do there is no right or wrong so it's not confronting it's all about relaxing and having fun. So I often walk around with the spray. You can give the students the sprayer and put spray bottles. Sometimes I do, sometimes I walk around and just give everyone's work a little spray. Okay, so we've got the yellow food dye here and you're just gonna paint that on. They can dot it on. add water and we really want to stay with the golden orange and you can use the 
colour apps on top and around. And we really want to cover the paper. So I'm just going to finish covering the paper and the students have a real opportunity to play. Not too much orange. Well, they can do what they want, but it's nice to see some of that gold. You can mix it in. And this paper holds the colour really well. You can see I've put a lot of water there and the paper is very, very strong. Okay. So once the students have had a little play with that, the first lesson you really need them to make the two pieces of paper, a warm and a cool. Okay. So we're going to take that aside and let that dry. I'm just going to hold that up because it's really beautiful. So I would have that maybe on a piece of paper or, or I have name stickers for my students. So I, I have the names printed out and I would stick it on. Right, so that's the first work and that's gonna go and dry. And the second, we're going to make a secondary color. So we're going to do green. So how do we make green? Start with our gold. And we want to try to have the yellow, the blue and the green. So we have a little bit of the colours coming through. If I add blue. So the students can have a sprayer or you could just have, if you don't have sprayers for everyone, they could have a tub of water that they dip into. Pure blue down here. I want to make it lighter, so I add water. It makes a big noise, doesn't it? Okay, so I've got greens, I've got blue, spreading it all out. Might even do a couple of little splatters. No, I don't like that. Let's rub that in. Okay. Again, hold that up and we get the beautiful paper doesn't break. Sometimes when you're working with the younger students and they rub the paper, the paper all starts to ball up and break. This paper won't do that. So we've got that lovely colour. And that needs to go off and dry as well. The second part of the lesson is going to be using a cool palette because we've already discussed our warm and cool colours and this time we're going to use paint and we're going to use the honeycomb. So this honeycomb, and I have reels of it in the art room, is fantastic for painting. Now what's really good about this with this activity is that Monet painted with light and you know small strokes so this is helping the work look like there's got small strokes in it so you just tape either the paper to the side like this and I'll do another one And this is that real play-based play sort of art. And I love to do this with the younger students. Do lots of um, make paper or make work from playing and experimenting and then turning the made paper that they've played and experimented with into finished pieces of art. And that's what this is. They will just be playing and having fun, but they're really doing light reflecting and cool palettes and, and there's lots that you can talk about with them. Tinting, adding white, pastel colours, what's a pastel colour, what happens when you add white to a colour. Okay. That's probably the hardest part, sticking the honeycomb across the paper. 
if you wanted to, you could just do it at one end of the paper and, and or slide work in and out and have it ready to go. So you can use it again without having to tape it to the paper. Okay, so my A3 paper is underneath. I'm going to be able to slide that out. Let's see. Use it again. And I'm going to take my paint. I like to start with white and just paint over the honeycomb. So maybe make, ask the students not to make the paint too thick, just dab it on and then spread it out and try to change the colours, keeping the palette cool, stippling your brush over, adding blue, purple, any cool colours and white just to make a, a contrast. Okay, so I've come to an end. I'm just gonna move that out of the way a bit. Okay, so you can carefully peel the tape off one end and this is the nice surprise part. All right, I love that. I love the variety of the colour in the dots. To me, that gives it a real play of light. Represents the water really well. So now we need this to dry and we've created three pieces of paper. We have a warm piece, a cool piece and a textured piece. We need them to dry and then the next lesson, we're going to bring all those together. So we've got this textured piece of paper, we have our warm piece of paper and we have our cool piece of paper. So what we're going to do now is revisit that conversation of what we see in the water. So we're going to talk to the students about the goldfish and the ripples and what lies under the water. Now the wonderful thing with the dispersing paper is the back and front are the same and with this paper here we're going to look at goldfish shapes. So you can have a discussion with the students about what's under the water, what do you see and the goldfish and do they move and when you look at the fish are they a perfect shape or because they're under the water, do they swim in schools or different directions, are they bigger when they're closer, do they get smaller as they get f further away. So you, you can have a discussion and steer the work the way you want. Now the next thing I would do is controlled ripping. So you're going to make a gold fish. So they need to have a ripped shape and it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to control rip, which is basically just ripping a little bit slower. And I'm going to try and get the V of the tail, which is going to give it the real shape. Remembering it's under the water, so it doesn't have to be perfect. If you're not happy, you just rip a little bit off. And this paper rips really nicely. So there's one, I've lost his tail, but that's okay. I've already made another one here, a bigger one. Okay, and the beauty of this paper is as well that the students have got quite a bit, so if they make a mistake or they're not happy, it's no, no bother, they can just rip another one. And they can have as many or as little on their work. There's another one that's a good one. That's a better shape. The reason why I'm not bringing scissors in because I like the softness of the line. So let's just say you have a student that can't do the tearing at all because this is the younger ones. They could draw a fish and they can cut it out if they can't do the tearing. I like the tearing. So but the cutting will give you a, a hard line, but if you're okay with that, that, you can do that as well. So I'm just going to do a few cut ones so you can see the difference. OK. 
Okay. So there's a little fish. And that, the cutting is easier for getting the shape right. But then I like these shapes because they're not right. So you can see the difference. You've got these wobbly shapes. And then you've got the cut one. Or maybe you can do a combination where if they can't get the tail right, they can just come in a little bit with the scissors to get that shape. See, it's changed it. I don't like it. I actually prefer the tearing. So that's an option. You could do cut, but I'm going to stick with the tearing. I like the organic feel to it. Okay, so what we want to do now is we're just going to use the glue stick and glue these down. I like them in different directions. You might want them swimming in the same direction. That would be up to the student, I think, because it's their artwork. Now, because they're the preps and the ones and twos, and maybe they don't look like fish, there is a little trick you can use. I use this trick a lot. and It's called a googly eye. <laughs> Whenever you need something to come to life, you put a googly eye on it and bam, it's awesome. So let's try that trick. So I've got some super tack here and I'm just gonna pop an eye on my fish. So an eye, and if you can't tell they'll fish, you will now. And who doesn't love a googly eye? So we've got these beautiful fish swimming in the water. But when we looked at the picture at the start, we saw some little ripples. Now to give this work another dimension, because we've actually got a background and this will become a middle ground and we're going to make a foreground. So that's three layers. We're going to take our dispersing paper where we had to try to rip a particular shape. This time we're going to just rip strips, but we're going to make a shape and then we're gonna try and make the ripples of water going around in a circle. So explaining to the students what they're doing. And paper always rips better one way, it's got a grain. So if they're having trouble ripping, get them to turn it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is rip up my paper and then I'm gonna arrange it into a ripple effect into a circle and see how I go. So we finished the work and we've done several things in this lesson, so I'm just going to recap. We've done colour theory, you've learned about cool and warm. We've done pattern and the printing. We've also done a background, a middle ground and a foreground. And that's something you can discuss and introduce with the students as well. I don't 
For me, it doesn't matter how young or old the students are, if I see something that's happened and I can introduce that art terminology, I do, whether they can retain that information or not, that's not a concern for me, it's about introducing. So I would introduce in this exercise, I would say about having a background, the fissure, the middle ground, and then the, the ripples or the leaves or the reeds, they're the foreground, so there's actually three levels. If, if the younger kids, the preps are struggling, you can remove one of the aspects of this to make it simpler. So the preps might just do the goldfish and the background paper. And as you get to grade one and twos, they might do the three levels. I would also talk about what they see and how, how did it feel to rip the paper? Was it difficult? What were the experiences? Really reflect on the work. I think this would look fabulous as a montage. So no black paper, but sticking the work side by side by side and making one giant pond. The students will have all used the same materials and the same colours, so the work should sit really nicely next to each other. And then you display the work, it will make a real wow factor. The students can be sat in front of it, reflect, comment, exhibit. And um, I think you'll find that they'll be really pleased with their work. The paper, the dispersing paper, holds the colour so well that, and you can see it, the goldfish are really gold with the yellow and the orange and the green and is really green and the backdrop's got the texture and the pattern, the repetitiveness of the circles. So the work has lots of elements and they're brought together and it looks fabulous. <laughs>